Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, I just wanted to share. I've got a, a video that is trying to load up. Saying that I was going to tell you what happened today with one of my visitors. So I'm going to do that and who knows when the videos will be posted. It could be today or it could be tomorrow. So I, w I had decided to turn my compost. I was right there. It, it didn't take very long. But I had turned that about a week ago. And I always like to turn it after a rain. So I had done that. And as, uh, as it decomposes and as it settles, it, it tends to pack a little bit, right? So what I do is I take my spade and fork and I loosen what I'm going to shovel up as I go and then put it in a nice neat little pile off to the side. So I was in the middle of doing that. It was, it was quite warm out. We had a nice breeze, but it was quite warm out and I was in the sun and the bugs were horrendous. Flight open on and all, they were just flying all around. And flight open in sweat. Flight open goes in your eyes. It, it stings a little bit, right? So I was ready for a break when a vehicle came slowly up the road and, and I, there's two vehicles that come in here that look like that, and I didn't know which one it was. They got up a little bit closer, but they parked just shy of where I was. Instead of in the driveway, they they parked, well, in front of my, my trellis that some people don't like because it's not store-bought, right? So they parked there, and these are two older people that stop in about twice a year, visit, they never come in. We just socialize out in the yard and another six months I'll see them again. So they pulled up and we always exchange hugs, but I noticed a, a young man that was with them and they introduced him as their grandson. Now in the other video, I think I I think I said that he was 13. I was mistaken. He is 15, almost 16. So he is staying with his grandparents for the summer because in all honesty, they said the parents needed a break because he's quite a handful. He is a teenager, know-it-all. He's got all the answers. He knows how to do it. You don't have to explain how to do anything to him. Everything is easy. Everything, any question, he's got the answer. Whether he's blowing smoke out his butt or not, he's got the answer, and he's gonna he's gonna tell you that he's got the answer, and everybody else is wrong. So he's a little cocky. So not only is he a normal teenager, he's got quite an attitude. He's got he's pretty cocky, folks. So the grandparents are. They've had him for a week and they're trying to mellow him out a little bit. Well, he's talking about what he's going to do. He is going to move back away from it all and he's going to have animals and he's going to haul his water and he's going to live a woodsman's life. He is going to farm, he's going to cut wood, he is joy going to make something of himself in the homestead community. I think that is absolutely perfect. I do. I think that's absolutely perfect. But the reality with this, this young man, well, he's kind of grandiose. He, he kind of is grandiose. So he had all the answers and this older couple that I know, they said, let's bring you to somebody that, that kind of lives that way. She's a 60 year old. Well, I, I am 58, but I do call myself 60 because it's close enough, right? I'm, I'm getting up there. I can't do anything as fast as I could before. I <laughs> really can't. So he a little chipmunk, a friendly little bugger. So I was out shoveling that compost. I had just loosened probably 
a quarter of the pile so I could just take the barn shovel and and shovel it right trying to dig the the barn shovel into a settled compost pile even though it's been a week is like trying to drive a barn shovel into your lawn it takes a spade not not a square-ended shovel right especially aluminum so he he was all excited he he wanted to know everything he wanted to know what i was doing and i said well this is compost that i shoveled into this pile a week ago now i'm turning it so i'm making another pile beside it and he said he really did, folks. He said, you're too old to do that in this heat. I'm like, well, I handed him the shovel. And he, surprisingly, he took it. But he took that shovel. Sorry, company popped in. That gave me a chance to grab the shovel anyway. So he took, he took this shovel, burn shovel, right? And he started heaving it like coal miners do back in the day. He would do that and he would shove it and put it right over his head. And it would fly everywhere. And he didn't like when compost got on him whatsoever. So I said, young man, I appreciate you helping me. But I kind of like to have that in a neat, nice, neat little pile so I don't have to handle it so much. And... He goes, okay. So he started shoveling it sideways like you would snow. And he was so gung-ho that he kept overshooting the pile. So his grandfather spoke up. And he spoke up pretty sharp. The, the, the grandfather and the grandmother, too, is they're losing patience with him. They I apparently, and I've seen it here today, that they would have to repeat themselves over and over and over again before he will listen. Well, that will only work once here. So the grandfather spoke up pretty sharp and he completely ignored his grandfather. His grandmother opened his opened her mouth to speak and I spoke before she did. I said, I don't mind you helping. It needs to go in a nice, neat little pile unless you want to gather up all the strewn compost and put it in the pile. Well, he didn't like the sounds of that because it was, it was too hot. And I reminded him, if you live like this, it doesn't matter if it's 30, 50 below. It doesn't matter if it's pouring rain. It doesn't matter if it's 110 degrees. Things have to be done. Granted, some things can be put off until a little bit better weather, right? Like turning compost. It didn't have to be done today, but I was right there and I thought of it and why not? It was time to turn anyway. So I said, some things can wait, but a lot of things can't. And it has to be done that day. If you have animals, you can't wait until the next day to water and feed them. Yeah. He said he would, he would make sure that they were, they were done. So he got to the part where I hadn't loosened it up with the spade and fork, the compost. And he drove that shovel in, and I swear to God, his, his arms came right off his shoulder. It stopped him right up because he gave it a big, big heave. And he didn't like that much whatsoever. He said, how come this isn't, and he demanded an answer. How come this isn't? loose like the like the stuff i've been shoveling why is this so hard packed you said you, you shoveled this a, a week ago i said i did i wait till after rain so it's all damp so when i turn it everything is damp i said and as it composts and as it settles it it tends to pack just like with dirt like with sawdust anything well he's not experienced to, he's not experienced enough to realize that's what happens to certain certain things in nature right so he proceeded to tell me that I again that I was too old to be living the way that I do and he did not believe that I hauled my water he did not believe that I didn't have electric he did not believe that I cut my own firewood that I run a chainsaw he did not believe that women can do that 
Now his his grandmother gardens. She doesn't garden so much anymore because she's got health issues. And her husband, the grandfather, has a lot of health issues. But they were definitely workers and they, they did homesteading for years and years and years. This young man, her his his mother grew up that way, but she she thought that was too rough of a life and moved out of state and became what we call here citified. She didn't have anything to do. She went to the grocery store and bought everything and and you know, got everything done did every week, right? Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Nothing wrong with that. Some of us choose that lifestyle. Some of us choose to trim our nails by digging in dirt, right? So, e either way, it's okay, in my opinion. So, he has had no experience, but he was, he was going to live basically the way I'm living here without any experience whatsoever. See, a lot of channels, as you all know, glorify homesteading. They don't show you a lot of the hard work. They don't talk about all the hard work. They do not talk about the nitty gritty of homesteading. It's usually one topic and it's, a lot of it is demonstrating, which I don't do a lot of. And they, some of them talk about their failures, but a lot of them do not, only the successes. So again, I, I did a video on this not too, not too long ago. Some of these homestead channels are very much misleading and people get into this, this pipe dream and they're going, they're going to move off grid and they are going to go home. They're going to homestead. And in reality, they don't know what they're getting into and a lot of them quit. Right? Right? So this young man, he, he had all the answers. Uh, he, he stopped shoveling because he got hot and sweaty. He didn't like it. It was too hot. And he asked where he could wash his hands. I said, well, right up on my deck there, there's a bin with some water in it. You can rinse your hands off there. Beside that is a, a bin with soapy water in it. And if you want to sanitize after that, there is... Uh, another basin over there with fresh uh, water. I see a, a uh, woodpecker, so I might start knocking on that tree. With alcohol and, and water in it. That's how I sanitize, right? And that's how I get through the day. And then at the end of the day, I just wash up really good, right? But in the meantime... In between doing things, if I get my hands dirty or whatever, I can at least wash my hands to a satisfactory before I go and kick my shoes off, go into the house and get a glass of water or have a bite to eat, right? And my hands will be sanitized and clean enough, right? Well, he did <laughs> that chipmunk. He didn't. He didn't like the idea of washing his hands. Outside, he asked me if I had a hose. I said, that water is clean. And that's all you need to wash up. He said, you don't have a hose. I said, I don't have running water, young man. He said, well, how do you stay clean? I said, I have water, I have soap, and I have a washcloth. That's how I stay clean. So he has a lot to learn, even though he had all the answers, right? And trust me, this young man had all the answers and he was very cocky about his answers. I know a lot of adults who think they have all the answers. And if you give them any suggestions or, or a different way of thinking about something or a, a way that works for you that may work for them, if you suggest that, then it's instantly shot down because even though they don't like how things are working for them and, and it's not working for them, 
because another way it's presented to them that that may work and may be easier they're going to completely they're going to completely disregard that because what they're doing is is how they want to do it even though they just want to bitch about it right so we all know people like that you you can't you just can't suggest anything they will shut you down turn a deaf ear so anyway there's my story uh there was a lot of a lot of comical moments but i'm running out of time my my battery is down to 11 percent my my phone does not like that when i'm recording so the grandmother she didn't say much but she she spoke volumes when after he washed his hands he said his hands didn't feel clean enough so she took him by the wrist, literally took him by the wrist, didn't say anything. Walked him the whole length of my driveway across the road to my compost pile. With her holding on to his one wrist, she reached over with the other hand and filled that hand right with compost that smelled still of pneumonia. And it was damp. So she goes, and she, like I said, she didn't say much. She said, there, you washed your hands and it wasn't good enough. So you can go home with your hands dirty. So he's got a lot to learn. Kudos to both grandparents. I can, I can definitely, definitely see why the parents needed a break. But I don't think I would do that to my grandparents. I don't think I would. So anyway, there was there was a few things that were said, not much. Uh, a few things that he did. He didn't know how to handle a shovel, folks. He didn't understand the 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 concept. If you take something in your in your shovel and it's full and you fling it over your head, he didn't understand the concept that uh, unless you fling it really hard. A lot of that's going to dump on you, right? So that's how he's going to learn. That's how he's going to gain experience. But when he left here, uh, homesteading wasn't wasn't quite the dream that that he thought it would be. He thought that the plants would grow on their own. Everything would maintain itself. When I explained to him, it takes just about 14 hours every single day. To just maintain here between the brush cutting the mowing the animals the firewood the raking the mulching the weeding the planting you name it it is literally 14 hours a day now on the weekends with my job I do I do 16 hours I do two days I work two 16 hour days well I'm there 16 hours but that doesn't include travel time both ways. And that does not include getting up, getting the animals ready, getting myself ready. So on the weekend, really, I, I'm, I'm awake 22, about 22 hours those two days. So I get, and if I get right to sleep, I get about two hours of sleep, three hours. If I'm lucky, four hours of sleep on the weekend. So my body is, is used to long days, so that I think that helps me here. I, I can maintain that for a while. Now, the older I get, the harder I, I seem to maintain that. Like the other day, I, oh, 13 minutes. The other day, it was raining, it was cold, it was a Monday, I was really tired. I really weren't quite feeling very good. And I wasn't feeling bad, I just wasn't feeling good either uh i sat down on my recliner and i slept for six hours so sometimes sometimes that happens and that uh, i think that's okay i do think that's okay if i fall asleep at at 10 11 o'clock at night and i wake up at midnight i could be up midnight two or three hours and then go right back to sleep and about time four o'clock comes around my eyes are awake and and i'm going so some people can do that some people can't 
I, I firmly believe that if you, if you're healthy, you eat right, you stay hydrated, you stay busy, don't overdo yourself. Don't let others stress you out. Live a happy life that you can, you can get by quite well by living the way that I do. Now, if, if I fell asleep and I slept 12, 16 hours, I figured that my body needed that, and it was probably past time for my body to sleep 16 hours. But if I sleep 16 hours, you bet your bippy I'm sick. I am really sick. A few years ago, quite a few years now, I had, uh, what is it, type, type A flu? That lasted about seven, eight weeks. Well, I thought, folks, I thought, I thought I was dying. I thought I was suffocating. I couldn't breathe. Didn't have, didn't have any energy whatsoever. Had a hard time eating. Had a hard time drinking. Had a hard time sleeping. Had a hard time staying awake. Um, yeah, some of that's real nasty stuff. So I'm very thankful for my health. I'm thankful for my energy. I'm thankful for a lot of things, and I truly believe it is because I get a lot of fresh air. I get a lot of exercise. I'm happy. I'm content. I like to stay busy. I rest when I need to. I drink a pile of water, and I eat right for the most part. Now, the other day it was so damn hot that I went down and, and got some ice cream, you know, a little thing of ice cream. And uh, that felt pretty good. That felt pretty good. Uh, for the most part, if, if you're happy and you're healthy and you're active, uh, you, can, you can stave off a lot of illnesses. That's just my opinion. All right, I've got to go. This is 16 minutes. The other one is having a hard time loading up. This one probably will be having a hard time loading up too. It might take a few days. So you all be good. Bye-bye.